I must warn you that this is not for the faint-hearted. This is probably one of the most dangerous ways to make money in the stock market. There is a chance that you will lose all your capital. But if you follow the strategies I am going to show you in this video, you will make loads of money trading stocks. What kind of stocks will you trade? Number one, they have very small floats. By that I mean they do not have more than 10 million shares available for trading. It is even better if the float is under 2 million. Number two, their price range is between $1 and $5. Stocks under $3 may provide you the best opportunity to profit because you can buy more shares with a small amount of money. Number three, they are known for spikes and crashes. They gain 50% to 500% or even more, only to lose most of that gain within a day or two. Now, where will you find these stocks? Well, I will give you 10 stocks now. You can trade them while looking for more. To speak the truth, you don't see people talking about them. Nobody writes about them. They are too tiny in capital size to be considered a player in the stock market. They are not movers and shakers. They come before you only when they spike. Here is my list. For every stock, I will give you their float and current trading price. Number 1. AISP. Float 3.68 million. Current price $2. Number 2. CPOP. Float 1.7 million. Current price $2.33. Number 3. CHNR. Float 3.99 million. Current price $1.2. Number 4. BNZI. Float 6 million. Current price $0.60. Number 5. LYT. Float 0.4 million. Current price $4.63. Number 6. LRHC. Float 5 million. Current price $1.66. Number 7. JXJT float 5.7 million current price 1.21 dollars number 8 HOLO float 1 million current price 3.5 dollars number 9 RVSN float 1.78 million current price 2.14 dollars number 10 AGFY float 1 million current price 0.36 dollars if you ask me what products these companies manufacture or what services they offer I would say, I have no idea. You have to understand that you will not invest in these stocks. You will only trade them, based on the chart before you. You will hold them from a few minutes to a few hours. You will abandon them before the trading session ends. You will trade the chart. If the chart says it is time to enter a trade, you will enter a trade. If the chart does not offer you a trade, you do not trade. You sit with your money waiting for the next available opportunity. If you ask what causes them to spike, don't you need to know if there is good news behind it and if the news is real? The answer is no. You don't care. You only care that there is a spike and you must make the best use of it. Again, you will trade the chart, not the product or people behind the news or the spike. You will trade them today, take your money and forget them. Moving on to the next stock. Tomorrow is a new day. There will be new players in the market tomorrow for you to exploit. You are ruthless. You are an assassin. You hit and run away with your money. Trading Strategy 1. Trading Price Action. Now how are you going to trade these stocks? You will short these stocks. You don't know when the spike will happen. In other words, you will know a spike has happened only after it has happened. These stocks sleep months or years before, increasing in value suddenly. So you will not go long with them. Once the spike has happened, perhaps during the pre-market, a stock can do one of these two things. Number one, it can continue to rise during the regular trading session. Number two, it fails to break the pre-market high and continues crashing through the regular session. Do not short a stock when it is rising. You will be crushed. Do not try to rectify your mistake by adding more shares to your losing position. You will be crushed even more. Do not chase a stock imagining you are losing loads of money by standing on the sideline. You will be crushed. The stock may rise to the previous high. If it rises more, that's okay. That's more money for you because it has more room to crash. At some point, traders will start taking profits, which will begin to exhaust the stock. Since it is a low float stock, selling a few thousand shares will affect it and pull it down. 
The interesting part is that when traders sense weakness in a stock, they want to exit their positions quickly, thus intensifying the decline. You do not have many buyers to buy a crashing stock. Sooner or later the stock must crash, and that's where you come in. You will wait for a pullback. After the pullback, the stock will try to rise again, because some uninformed people believe it is a good time to enter the market during the pullback because the stock will rise again. Unfortunately, their number is small, and they cannot compete with thousands of traders like you who want to bank on the stock's weakness. The stock will make a lower high at the fair value gap. Then it will fall. You will short the stock as it plunges through the pullback low. Your stop loss will be above the lower high or above the fair value gap. Never, never short a stock without using a stop loss. A stock can grow from $1 to $80 within an hour or faster, let alone a session. We have seen many instances of this in recent years. Remember the Reddit short squeezes? If you are new to trading, you should use five-minute charts. That way, you will get enough time to think and decide. Observation is more important than trading in this regard. Anyone can buy or sell a stock. You only have to click a button. But not many people know when to buy or sell. That's why most traders lose money in the stock market. If you are an experienced trader, you may use one-minute chart. You may even use hotkeys for faster execution or a trade manager to calculate your stop loss and take profit automatically. I will make a video about this shortly. Do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Trading Strategy 2 Trading VWAP VWAP, or Volume Weighted Average Price, is the ratio of the value of a stock traded to the total volume of shares during a trading session. It resets at the start of every new trading session. It helps to eliminate any noise occurring throughout the day, allowing you to understand at what prices other traders are trading the stock. VWAP is more accurate than moving averages. But you can use moving averages to understand where the market may head next. However, for this trading strategy, we will limit ourselves to VWAP alone. Using many indicators will distract you, barring you from understanding how the market behaves. Some traders like waiting for the stock to fall below the VWAP line before entering a trade. The strategy is that the VWAP works as a resistance. The stock falls below the VWAP but rises to it only to fall again. You may wait to see at least two failures before shorting the stock. Your stop loss will be above the VWAP line. Don't short the stock right after it has gone below the VWAP. You need confirmation that the VWAP is indeed a resistance. One little mistake can cause the stock to hit your stop loss, unintentionally taking you out of the trade. These confirmations can be like two candles failing to cross the VWAP line or a candle crossing the VWAP line but ending under the VWAP, leaving a long wick at the top of it. Wait for the candle to end and short the stock at the beginning of the next candle with a stop loss above the wick or the VWAP line, taking profit. In both cases, your profit should be at least twice your risk. Take 80% of your position out of the market and let the rest run risk-free. To make the trade risk-free, you will need to bring the stop loss down to the entry price. You may reposition the stop loss multiple times to ensure a higher profit and to stop losing the profit if the market reverses and the stock begins to rise again. Smart money somewhere may think it is time to enter the market again. They may buy thousands of shares to have a good dollar cost average. The stock may rise fast and even break the resistance of the VWAP to make a higher high before the session ends. Do not plan to make 5x or 10x of your risk in one trade. While a 2x profit target may be hit 75% of the time, a 5x profit target may be hit only 10% of the time. Be greedy, but stop becoming extra greedy. If you have removed 80% of your position from the market, you'll already have some money in your account. Congratulations! You are on the right track to achieve your financial solvency. At that point, you may be tempted to enter the market again. Don't do it. Don't be extra greedy. Making money is difficult. Losing it is easy. Stay on the side. Wait for the following day 
Wait for the next big opportunity. Even if you risk the money you just made, it is still your money. You have no right to give it away without a strict plan. If you do, your capital will ultimately shrink when a trade does not go your way. Number of trades a month. You may make only a handful of trades a month. Fifteen trades a month would be great. But if you do only five trades and make a handsome amount of money with them, you should be happy as a trader. It may happen that you do not take any position three days at a stretch. That is okay. You could not make money, but you also did not lose anything. You can make a lot of money by making only three trades per month, provided you read the market well and position yourself accordingly. A $4 stock may decline by $2 or more after the spike. If you trade a 1,000 shares of that stock, you can make $2,000 in one trade. If you can do that three times a month, you don't have to look back. Trading can replace your job. How to handle losing streaks. Remember, every trade may go against you. You cannot control the market. It has its own whims. Every time you lose a trade, you are one trade closer to a winning trade. But you may even lose multiple trades at a stretch. I do not trade for the rest of the week if I lose three trades at a stretch. Trading is stressful. You can keep that stress under control by deciding how much you may lose per trade, per trading session, and per week. As soon as you hit those levels, you stop trading. The general tendency is you want to recover your losses by trading more after you're losing trades. That is called revenge trading. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. There will be time to recover your losses. That time is just not right after you're losing trades. You are not any smarter after you're losing trades. In fact, you are worse. You are under pressure. The market does not care for your loss. It has no mercy. All you can do is wait and return to the market when you can think clearly, when you understand what went wrong and why the trade went against you. Always remember, even the best traders lose money in the market but they ultimately win because they lose smaller amounts when they lose and make bigger amounts when they win. You will be on the winning side even if you lose 65% of your trades. How to set your loss limits. You should not risk more than 1% of your capital per trade. That is, you may risk only $100 per trade if you trade with $10,000. In that case, you may buy only 1,000 shares of a stock with a stop loss 10 cents above your entry price. You should not buy 2,000 shares simply because you have enough money in your account to do that. Always calculate your maximum loss amount first and adjust the number of shares you will trade based on where you place your stop loss. If you are an aggressive trader, you might raise your loss per trade to 3%. A 5% loss is too high and never recommended. Most traders have to leave the market empty-handed simply because they cannot decide how much they are ready to lose. The market has its rules, which are no rules at all. If you lose, it is your fault. Hope you have gained something from this video. Trade with a small amount of money to see how these strategies work for you. You can scale your trades once you gain experience and become confident as a trader. Remember, successful trading is the result of discipline, patience, and continuous improvement. It needs time and determination to win the market. And once you begin to win it, you are set for life. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on money, trading, and investing. Goodbye.